Hello viewers, it's Ed Budd here and I'm back with a comparative shoe shootout between the New Balance Fuel Cell TC and the Nike Zoom Fly 3. If it's your first time here or it's not your first time here, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications of when I launch my new videos. Without further ado, let's get to the shootout. That's why you're here, right? So I think this seems like the most reasonable, sensible and appropriate comparative video to make. The two shoes occupy similar spaces within those sort of running shoe rotations that we might have. You know that being reasonable, sensible and appropriate is me in a nutshell, right? I think to the untrained eye, these two shoes appear quite similar. They might be about the same weight at around 310 grams. They're certainly intended for the same sort of use, faster tempo runs, those faster pace, time trial type efforts. Not sure either of them I would use for racing. They got lots of foam in the midsole, they got carbon plates. Let's get to the comparison. So to the upper first, which sees the biggest differences between the two shoes. The Fuel Cell TC here, it's very light, it's very breathable, the upper. You can almost hear it breathing. It reminds me a little bit in terms of its look to freshly fallen snow or perhaps salt when you accidentally spill lots of salt on your worktop. It looks a little bit like that. I think I've been spending a bit too long with these shoes. It's been really great actually, the first few times I've taken it out in warmer weather over here in the UK. Of course, because we've all got to stay inside, it's beautiful outside. What is it now? It's 23 degrees out there. <laughs> yeah, so a breathable shoe is certainly what's needed and this has done the job for me. I can certainly see myself using this shoe through the course of the summer for those higher tempo pace runs. Of course, it's not mesh on the whole of the shoe. You've got this suede effect type stuff, almost a felt sort of feeling. I haven't found that to make the shoe overly hot or anything like that. It's obviously been put there to increase the longevity of where the eyelets are, to provide a bit of extra protection. Got a feel that's gonna improve durability of that section of the shoe over time. I went up a half a size in these to an 11 and a half, and it's absolutely perfect in terms of sizing for me. Just enough room there in the toe box. It just doesn't really feel like there's anything around my foot, I've gotta say. Some shoes are very present on foot, this one certainly isn't. I've utilized some of these air vent holes on the top here as a makeshift lace loop. I'm not sure I could trust Mrs. Edbud with her sewing needle on these. I shied away from it. Not that she would damage any of my running shoes, I'm sure that she really appreciates every single one of them. The middle part of the tongue is very slightly padded just to relieve a bit of the old pressure on top of the foot. In terms of upper, Zoomfly 3 certainly uses this vapor weave stuff, but there are parts of the shoe where there's actually three layers of upper around your foot. The tongue kind of has this adjoining mesh, this green sort of mesh piece inside. You've then got this black section you can see on the inside of the vapor weave and then the vapor weave on top of that. I think the implementation of vapor weave here is very welcome. I mean, it's great on the next percent. I really enjoyed it on there, but it does feel like there's a considerable amount of material around your foot. I've always felt it to be a very hot shoe. I don't mean the thing that you get on top of your camera that provides power to other devices. I mean, it's a hot shoe. I just feel for a fast paced tempo shoe, you're gonna be working hard. Anything that helps to keep your foot cool is good, right? I found it relatively comfortable in terms of upper, just a very hot shoe. Apart from this sort of nylon-y neoprene section, kind of bunching up somewhat in the middle of the shoe, across the tongue really. So I think in terms of upper, between the two shoes, the award goes to the Fuel Cell TC. On to midsole now, there's a 10 mil drop on the Fuel Cell TC and an eight millimeter drop on the Nike Zoom Fly 3. Stack heights are a little different between these two shoes. Using my very arbitrary measurement system, I've come to the conclusion that there's a 30 mil stack height in the heel and 20 in the forefoot on the TC and 36 in the heel of the Nike Zoomfly 3 and up in the toe box here, it's a 28 millimeter stack height. I find that the TCs are a lot more stable than the Zoomfly 3. I've always felt you're very high, but it just feels unstable. It doesn't feel anywhere near as stable as the Alpha Fly. I mean, that's even higher, but I'm telling you now, naysayers, whatever, it is a much more stable shoe. 
When you do get a chance to try it, guys, it is a more stable shoe, the Alpha Fly, okay? As somebody who's worn the Infinity run recently with loads of React in the midsole of there, this shoe does feel very different. I wouldn't say it's a bad shoe, it certainly isn't. I've had some great runs in the Zoom Fly 3, but the React implementation just feels really different between this shoe and the Nike Infinity run. The fuel cell foam in the midsole here is much, much softer. I say softer, it just seems more stable as well. I don't know where they position perhaps the rubber on the outsole helps with that, but this doesn't feel anywhere near as high going around corners and such. It doesn't feel anywhere near as unstable. You don't really get that feeling of kind of falling into the midsole or sinking into it with the TC. It just seems to work with my running mechanics a little bit better than the Zoom Fly 3. And as such, it's a far more enjoyable experience to me at my tempo paces, or lower actually, when I've run at a slower pace, doing some warm downs, this shoe still works for me. Whereas the Zoom Fly 3 felt very clunky at lower paces. Paces of about seven minutes 15 to seven minutes 30 per mile were very easily achievable with the Fuel Cell TC. And my legs don't feel anywhere near as fatigued as they would do doing the same type of tempo pace run in the Zoom Fly 3 with that React foam. This TC still got some good rigidity throughout the midsole there because of the carbon fiber plate, but I think that slightly lower stack height, increased heel to toe drop, and a more forgiving midsole make this an easy win for the New Balance Fuel Cell TC. So, both shoes have a similar kind of arrangement, four foot rubber section, they're very similar really, and then some rubber strips at the back around the heel. Somewhat straighter pieces in the Zoom Fly 3 and some curved pieces in the Fuel Cell TC. Neither of these shoes are really designed for being used off-road, on trails, things like that. They're certainly road hogs, these one asphalt and pavement. I did manage to utilize the TCs earlier on today on some very wet grass where the dew was still on top of the grass. It was quite early morning. I think it was about half eight by the time I got out there, but they really didn't like grass too much, especially when it was wet. I was a slipping and a sliding. I encountered similar behavior when I went back through my notes on the Zoom Fly 3. That four foot rubber in the Zoom Fly 3 really isn't the same as the next percent. They look similar, but the actual composition of the rubber is quite different. When I went back through my notes on the Fuel Cell Rebel in terms of the midsole foam and the outsole rubber, I did comment that it did seem to deteriorate relatively quickly. Whether this will be the same for the Fuel Cell TC, I don't know, but certainly after 100 miles, or it's more than 100 in these now, the outsole rubber on the Zoom Fly 3 is holding up pretty well. In fact, there's very, very little degradation there. There is a slight bit of deterioration of the rubber on the TC already after about 14 miles. But there's loads of rubber left there. I think if it does start to deteriorate any more, I might start to get concerned. So in terms of traction, not an awful lot in it really between these two running shoes. Durability is hard to say right now. This one's tried and tested. No, it's gonna hold up pretty well. With this one, hopefully similar in terms of the performance and durability of the Fuel Cell Rebel. So I'm gonna make this one a draw for the time being and then update you perhaps on my 100 mile review of the TC. I think I'll get there relatively quickly. I really enjoy running in this shoe right now. There's nothing I really don't like about it. A bit of a bonus comparison because the way a running shoe looks is important, right? Zoom Fly 3, it's not the greatest looking shoe ever. It's not gonna win any beauty contests, I don't think. That side, it's not as bad as I've made out, I don't think. This to me though, it looks sleek, it looks smooth. There's a crispness to it. There's very little to dislike about this. I even like the, the cool blurred New Balance logo at the front. So I think for visual aesthetic appeal, it's gotta be the Fuel Cell TC. A few of the viewers did ask me about the width of the Fuel Cell TC against the Zoom Fly 3. I can confirm that the width at the midfoot area is slightly wider on the TC. There's a slightly wider landing platform. As you can see there, it's not anywhere near as narrow in the midfoot arch area as the Zoom Fly 3. If I've missed anything out from the comparison or you've got any more questions, please don't hesitate to place them down in the comments and I'll answer them as quickly as I can. It's time for a musical interlude. Quite a lot of you know that I'm into my 50s rock and roll rockabilly stuff. So I have been listening to the Stray Cats again recently. Certainly playing with my own group, I really enjoy playing Rot This Town and the Stray Cat Strut and the classic rockabilly tune, Fishnet Stockings. So I had a bit of a blast with the Stray Cats on my tempo run this morning in the Fuel Cell TC. Brian Setzer is one of my guitar heroes, really. A fantastic player, 
not only for sort of rockabilly and rock and roll style guitar, but he's a great jazz and swing player too. So do check him out, Stray Cats, or any of Brian Setz's solo material. I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, it's time for me to mosey on down the highway. I hope you're all staying safe, guys, and keeping in line with those social distancing rules in your area. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell down below for notifications of when new Ed Bud videos are launched. Please give the video a thumbs up like and comment below with your questions. Not sure why anyone would have a keyboard up here. Please share the video with your running buddies. I do appreciate it. Thanks for watching once again. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.